This is episode 192 of Your Career Podcast. I had the pleasure of interviewing author and ageism activist Hunter Leonard at the end of 2019, pre-COVID-19 days, to discuss the opportunities for mature age workers who are considering setting up and marketing their own business. The release of this episode now is very timely because due to the challenges within many industries due to the coronavirus, there has never been a better time to control your own career by exploring self-employment. Now, before we begin, if you're considering setting up your own business, you can take my free Build Your Business Masterclass. The link to the masterclass is on my homepage at janejacksoncoach.com. Hunter Leonard is a business owner, marketer, and speaker who has developed a significant reputation for outstanding marketing and strategic growth through his first business, Blue Frog Marketing. He founded a second business in 2016, Silver and Wise, which is changing the world one mature age Australian at a time. He has written six books, won six major awards for marketing excellence, surveyed more than 10,000 business owners, delivered over 600 presentations, and contributed to over $2 billion in sales growth for his clients since 2001. He is highly regarded for his innovative thinking and perspectives and his ability to engage his audience and contribute positive energy to anything he is involved with. His latest book, Generation Experience, is a bestseller and it details eight steps to mature age business success. He's currently writing three more books on various topics and he has developed partnerships with some of Australia's largest corporations and is on track to create billions of dollars of economic benefit for the Australian economy through these partnerships. When not running his business, Hunter is a keen musician, photographer and cook. And now let's welcome Hunter to the show. Hello, Hunter. Good day, Jane. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing very, very well. Feeling a little bit jet lagged, having just come back from London, having been there for for five weeks as yes. my daughter had a baby. I'm now yeah, a grandmother. That's Thank exciting. you so much. How did I get this old, or should I just say mature? And because you you work with people who are mature age workers transitioning into entrepreneurship, yeah. Between the two of us, I think we're proof that you are never too old to live your dreams. And so, what I'd like to do is, how about let's start at the beginning, Hunter. Let's, yep. let's find out what your early career aspirations were when you were a little boy. Yeah, totally. Well, actually, I spent most of my childhood running around collecting insects and plants and all sorts of things. So I was a bit of a science geek, even from about four or five years old. And I actually wanted to, I wanted to be a scientist from when I was really quite young. Um, and as I got a little older, that sort of turned into wanting to be a ranger in the national parks. Um, so yeah, that, that was my, my big dream was to be out outdoors and, uh, basically collecting insects and plants and things. It was quite, quite interesting that I had it from so young. I know your early career was in pharmaceuticals and pharmaceutical sales. So yeah. from, from your early aspirations when you were very little, how did your career begin? Yeah, well, I actually studied science. So I went to university and studied, uh, land management and environmental science at Macquarie Uni. Um, so I had a Bachelor of Science and my first job was actually with the Department of Territories in Canberra and that was the pathway to becoming a ranger. Um, unfortunately, my dad got quite ill when I was uh, in my early 20s and so I moved back to Sydney to basically be close to him um, while he was sick and um, after he passed away, unfortunately, I, I, I sort of <laughs> I looked at the career and I thought, I could, I'd really like to be a ranger, but at the time I think it was paying about $10,000 a year and, and I started looking for jobs because I thought, well, I'll stay in Sydney now. Um, started looking for jobs and I saw one that needed a, a science degree and that was basically about triple that pay and I, so I think I must have got a little bit of capitalist in me and um, <laughs> ended up as a sales rep in the pharmaceutical industry, which turned into a 
a career in marketing after a few years. So, uh, mm. yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that you can follow your passion, but we still have to eat. And That's so exactly we need right. to make a living. And, yeah. and until you're actually earning enough, if, if you're following your passion and not earning enough money, there's there's always going to be that worry, isn't there? Yeah, so you totally. Need to balance yeah. the passion and purpose with making a living and being able to, to pay the bills. Yeah, totally. So transitioning into pharmaceutical sales and then marketing, how did mm. you make these transitions and how – how did it feel when you were, you know, making one change to the next? Um, the first, the first part of my career was with an American pharmaceutical company, and they were incredibly good at training and development. So they were always wanting to develop their their staff through a career, whatever that career might be. Uh, I spent three three and a bit years in general practice sales and then specialist sales, and then there was an opportunity to go into a junior marketing position, and I'd done some. Uh, testing of marketing materials as a sales representative and I kind of like that idea of you know creating brochures and and presentations and that sort of thing so I got an opportunity to go in as a a marketing associate which was an entry-level position and then through that they just got more and more training and so they they took me through a career right through into senior product management where I launched a major product you know on my own with you know million dollar budgets and all that sort of thing so that was all really good um, that, that transition because it was very supported by the the company that I was working for, who were always interested in finding people who were passionate about different areas and, and forwarding their careers through, you know, amazing amounts of training. So my all my marketing knowledge came from what was effectively postgraduate tr- training at various universities, funded mm-hmm. by the pharmaceutical company because they wanted to train us in all aspects of marketing, and they were probably one of the best at it. So we ended up with pretty good training, uh, yeah. which was awesome. Yeah. How fantastic to have an organisation that really invests in the development of their people through the training and offering, you know, additional education and certifications and qualifications because not all companies do that. No, totally. And to to sort of put a value on that would be incredibly difficult because I still use some of the training I got from them, you know, mm-hmm. 20 years ago in my marketing because of the way they basically taught you all the basics and the foundation of marketing really well right back to the beginnings of marketing and advertising and, you know, the madman age of the 1950s. We learned all, from all of those experts and, and we learned it really, really well. Um, and and it's still today I draw on that, that knowledge and experience when I'm preparing marketing plans. So, yeah, it was pretty good. And in your business now, which is Silver and Wise, helping yeah. mature age uh, clients into setting up their own businesses, the sales and marketing solid experience that you've got, it augurs really well to assist them as well as your general management experience too, yes? Yeah, totally. And and what I uh, have learned over the years of running my own business is that really the person who runs the business has to either have a skill in something or they have to have a really good expert or somebody that they can employ that has that skill. You can't ignore the different aspects of running a business because that's where, in our surveys, where business owners get into trouble, where they where they kind of don't handle one part of their business. It gets out of control and then ends up eventually causing them to fail or to not perform as well as they'd like to. Mm. Yeah. You know, before we get into everything that Silver and Wise does for, sure. for budding entrepreneurs, can you tell me when you were in corporate and you, you had a solid career in sales and marketing moving yeah. forward, what was the catalyst for you to make that transition into entrepreneurship yourself? Well, it, it sort of took two steps. I, I moved to Melbourne with my wife. We got married in Sydney. I'm sorry, in Melbourne, but lived in Sydney for a few years. And then we decided we'd go and move to Melbourne to be um, close at her family for a while. So I changed jobs in the pharmaceutical industry from a Sydney company to a Melbourne company. And then very early in that change, I was exposed to the advertising industry side of things um, uh, a lot more because of the role I, I had, which was actually developing performance reviews for the agencies that we were using with the company. So um, I started in looking at this advertising sort of things and I got really interested in it. I think I'd had nearly a decade as a as a product manager by then and I kind of, I think, probably got to the end of, you know, what I was going to learn in that, in that sort of role. Um, and so I actually um, approached one of the agencies and they, they had a job going and, and So I applied for it and made the switch from what is called the client side to the agency side. Um, And that that was the real catalyst to understanding this idea of running a business because 
I started as a, a senior account manager um, coming across. Um, I had a lot of strategic experience from my training, so that actually put me ahead of a lot of agency personnel because I actually knew how to write a business plan and a marketing plan. So uh, very quickly, within a couple of years, I was ended up being general manager of that, that office, um, which gave me a lot of experience with running a multi-million dollar business with 20-odd staff that were creative and suits and all, all the different terms that we use in agency land. Um, and then the transition to my own business was um, one of these quirky things that sometimes come out of nowhere. Uh, one of my friends asked me one day, she said, my husband has just been given a job running a business and he's having trouble with his marketing. Can you sit down with him and have a chat? So we sat down and had a chat and he said, I'm not sure what I need to do and who should be doing it. And so I wrote him a, a brief on the sort of person he needed for the role, um, what they needed to do, what a marketing plan looked like, blah, 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 blah. Um, two weeks later, he came back and said, I can't find anyone. Would you do it? And I said, well, I've, got, I've got a job. And I said, if I was going to do that, I'd have to, you know, I'd have to have, have a contract, blah, 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 blah. So he, we literally got a napkin out and he wrote the contract on the back of the napkin and said, right, will that do? Um, and I'd, my dad was a business owner, so I'd always grown up in a family that ran their own business. And so I thought, well, I'm 35. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. If I'm going to do it, I may as well do it now. So I made the made the leap into um, running my own business, which was was kind of a soft landing because I had a contract. Um, this guy was going to pay me for a period of months to do the work for him. Um, but nonetheless, it was kind of you know I freaked out a fair bit. <laughs> Thirty five, taking going from a general manager role to of twenty staff to myself with a computer and a second hand desk in my office at home <laughs> in the in the lounge room. So mm-hmm. it was a bit of a change, I have to say, and. Um, uh, that that change of into going to run your own business and then, you know, following this path that you don't really know where it's going to lead, you don't know what you need to know, you don't know what you've got to do. One day you're cleaning the bins out, the next day you're writing a strategic plan, you know, you've got all the hats as a business owner. Um, it was quite um, it, it was quite stressful for a while, but uh, I ended up, it wasn't too long before I really realised that I liked being in charge of my own destiny and running my own thing and servicing the clients the way I wanted to serve them. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, that sounds like the ideal beginning, really. It was almost like an opportunity presented itself. And totally. then it was like, hey, this could be my own business. Now, yeah. now what about that, that transition from permanent full-time employment with superannuation and paid leave and holiday leave and all that sort of thing that comes with a permanent role into yeah. running your own business where you've got the flexibility and the freedom and doing it your own way and all those positives as well, but not quite that perceived security of yeah, a permanent totally. role. How did you feel about that change? Oh, it was um, at times terrifying. <laughs> um, one of the things I noted really early on was, of course, when you're being paid you, you know twice a month the money would just land in your account and it was all yours so whatever came in your account was your money that was your exchange for doing your job it's very very different running a business because when you get paid by the client that's money is not all yours mm-hmm. some of it's the some of it's the government in terms mm-hmm. of tax some of it's got to be put aside for super for yourself um, some of it's got to pay for the computers and the telecommunications and the car and the whatever else so uh, that that takes actually takes some doing, and it's one of the things I actually see business owners have a lot of trouble with is they look at their account and they actually don't know how much in the account is theirs. Mm. So that was one became one part of our our mentoring program is this idea of what what happens when you go from being an employee to being a business owner. So <laughs> um, you know, I got I, I call them blood noses. You know, when you run into a wall, and, you, mm-hmm. and yeah, I've had a few of those. So you know, clients going out of business, losing revenue, all all the things you could possibly think would happen in a business, I've experienced it, and then tried to find ways of solving it so it didn't happen again in the future. Yeah, you know what's really interesting is that you know, like when I'm working with people who are starting out in their own businesses as well, and also some who get into trouble, yes. is that they talk about their turnover, and so yes. the turnover could be huge. It could be amazing. However. Totally. You don't think about the expenses, you know, and there are a lot of people who are running restaurants and it's like we're full every night and we've got people coming in and we're we're turning over such such a great amount. But then, you know, when it comes to staff and and all of the expenses that come with that, utilities, rent, et cetera, um, if, if your net profit at the end of the day is 
very, very small compared with your turnover, then how successful really is the business? And so, yeah, totally. so I'm, I'm sure that this is what you coach people through. Yeah, yeah. It's all about th this idea of, um, well, uh, a good friend of mine who's a very, very smart man in terms of money says that profit is vanity. Oh, sorry, revenue is vanity. Mm. Profit is sanity. Yes. Cash flow is king. So <laughs> all he cares about is, is the money in the account at the time you need it, which is cash mm. flow effectively? Yeah. Do you have enough yeah. to pay the bills every day when they come in um, and enough in reserve to sort of plan for the rainy day? And it actually take, takes some doing because every business is different. Um, the, the, the amount something costs you and how much you charge, uh, the, the margin that you make is different in different industries. Um, the volume is different in different industries. So the principles remain the same, but you do need to have a system to understand that. Mm. And, know, and, you know, a lot of businesses don't charge enough for their services. Um, mm. So, so they're, they're, they don't have enough difference between what it costs them and what they're delivering at to actually make money, even though they think they're doing okay. <laughs> yeah. And the numbers, the numbers really matter. Totally. And if, if, you, if you think, oh, you know, I'll fly by the seat of my pants and the money will come in, no, that's, that's, really, that, that's not the way that business works at totally. all. And totally. you have to be so very, very careful. And yeah. you, you're right, you touched upon people who are not sure how much they should charge. Are they actually charging enough? And I find that that's the case with many consultants. Yes. Um, who, who ask me, you know, like, what should I be charging? And, you know, some people say, oh, well, you know, other consultants charge this much. Maybe that's what I should be charging or should I be charging less? And I'm going, mm. oh, think of the value that you bring. Yes. And if you become a, a, the key person in that particular industry or that area, people will want you and will pay what it is that you charge because you actually deliver the results for them. And I think that's yes. very important too. Yeah. 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 And we, we talk about this idea of promise yeah. and delivery as well. Is yeah. that trying to work out how much you charge is all about the, the equation as well. Mm -hmm. what are people, how do people value it? But then you've also then got to deliver what they perceive to be the value they're going to get because if they don't get that, then whatever you charge is too much. So, <laughs> yeah. That's right. And then you won't get repeat business. No. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. okay. So tell me, Silver and Wise is a business that you've set up. Yes. And exactly what do you offer? Okay, so what we offer is helping mature age people. Um, so by definition from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, that's someone between the age of 45 and 64. We're not ageist, but we are pro giving opportunity to people who are experienced and, and wise. So it's why we call it silver and wise. Um, and what we basically we offer is somebody who has uh, either about to transition or has already transitioned um, and Sometimes they can't find a new job because there is ageism. So this is a core platform, the human right of the right to work or the right to be financially prosperous, if you like, mm -hmm. and we help them start a business. And the way we do that is obviously using my experience for 20 years of running a business, but also we surveyed 10,000 business owners to find out what challenges they had in running businesses. And then we created a whole range of materials and courses and coaching mm -hmm. based on those eight challenges which cover all of the things you need to, to know or need to be in control of to run a business successfully so that you don't fail. And when you mature, you probably don't have a lot of chances to fail too many times So because you want to basically start a business to make money instead mm -hmm. of working for someone else and getting a wage. Uh, so that's what we do, basically. Um, and we've got uh, licensed advisors and myself and we, we we take these people and we teach them how to run a business effectively. We also teach them how to know that they're ready to run a business. So we also will say to people, you're not ready. You don't have enough financial backing. You don't have enough knowledge. You don't have enough value um, to actually start a business that's going to be successful. So we'll put them through that sort of reality check, if you like, and then we coach them to run the business and be successful by taking them through those, those challenges. Um, mm -hmm. All with the aim of them being prosperous but also for the economy to be stronger because we need mature age people to be productive. We can't afford them to have 40-year retirements. We can't afford them to be on unemployment benefits if they haven't got enough money to retire. And I don't know about you, but I, I certainly wasn't ready to retire at 50 emotionally or financially. So, yeah, so that's what we do. Yeah, and I think helping someone to build their own business so that they are in control is is such a rewarding experience as well. So yeah. you must you must have such a great feeling when you see someone set up their business and they get it up and running, and then they come back to you and say, "Hey, it's successful." 
Yeah, totally. And and what we do is we, we kind of have a, a handshake agreement. We don't want to stalk people, but we like to say to anyone that's either been through our coaching or has done our courses to sort of keep in touch with us so that they can tell us how they're going. So mm. we're actually wanting to track our impact, what's our impact on the individual and what's our social impact overall as well. Um, mm. Because it is it is nice. I, I actually had a friend of mine the other day, he'd, he'd uh, given him a copy of my book when I published it and and, and he'd gone away because he was actually working for someone as a contractor um, and he wanted to start his own business and he rang me up the other day and he said, he said, I just wanted to tell you that your book is well-thumbed, it's got notes and, and post-it notes stuck in it and I've underlined, you know, 50 of the pages and blah, blah, blah. And he said, it changed my life because I now understand what it's going to take for me to run a business. And, and I, yeah, I felt the, the warm and fuzzies inside when he said that because I, I felt I'd actually made a difference to his journey, which is what, what basically what we're all trying to do, you know, leave a legacy for somebody else who's had some impact from what we know. Yeah, yeah. As, as a coach, it's so rewarding to know that you've made a difference. Now, you've mentioned your book, but it's yeah. called Generation Experience. So yeah. tell us a bit more about Generation Experience, the book. Yeah, cool. So uh, when we did this survey of 10,000 business owners and came up with the, the, the methodology, if you like, or the, or the approach that we thought people should take to be successful in business, I, I wrote it all down and put it in a book, effectively. I, I'm of the opinion, um, I'm the kind of guy that I'd rather just give the information away in a book. So for 20 bucks, somebody can, somebody can have that information. And if they're a self-starter and that's enough for them, they can go off and do it. Mm. I don't um, say, well, read the book and that'll give you half of the answer and then you have to go and pay me a bunch of money to mm. tell you the rest. <laughs> the old, I've got a secret. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> so the book is effectively the eight steps to success and we, we go through the, the basics of each one. So, you know, we were talking about money before. Um, we talk about this concept that money is either coming into your business or it's going out of your business and somewhere in the middle you've got to record and report what it does while it's in your business and, and that's, as, that's as simple as we keep it. In each of the chapters, we just take three things that somebody should put in place first. If they want to get a little bit more detailed, like they want to talk to a, a HR expert about hiring people, we will say, "Well, go and talk to a HR expert." We're not we're not the HR expert, but we do know that if you're going to employ somebody, you need to have certain things in place. If you're going to fire them, you need to have certain things in place. And if you want them to do a good job while they're with you, then you have to have some management principles in place to to keep good people you know, doing well and happy while they're working with you. So we keep, it's, a, it's a, that very sort of broad brush level of um, if you know these things, you'll run a better business. Mm-hmm. If you yeah. ignore them, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not me saying it, it's 10,000 business owners who've been out there and been on the journey before you. So I kind of feel my, I'm like a translator or a mm-hmm. communicator. I take the message from the 10,000 businesses that we surveyed. I pass it on to each individual business owner and say, hey, this is what these guys told me they had mm-hmm. trouble with. So you probably want to put some attention on those things when you start your business. It's the stories that are so important because every single business has got its own challenges and every person who's a business owner has their own personality and their own values and the way that they do things. So having all of this information amalgamated into, you know, one very valuable book, I think is is going to be such a a great resource. And I like your values. We're in alignment here, Hunter, because your values of you wrote a book so that people could take it and run with it on their own yes. and you're not holding anything back. It's it's the same as, you know, I, I wrote Navigating Career Crossroads. And again, yes. it's a complete brain dump of everything I've been doing at yes. that time when I wrote it for 15 years of coaching. It's what you need to do to make a successful career transition. If yeah. you follow the steps, you can do it. If you yes. want extra coaching, that's up to you, but you actually don't need it if you follow yes. the steps. Exactly. And, and I think that's why your book and my book, they continue selling because it's a valuable resource. It's almost like a textbook. If you yeah. follow this, this will happen and it makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And the other thing I like to do is lift people up and say that they have value, like particularly with yeah. our audience. Um, yeah. I'm kind of stripping away a bit of um, this attitude and behaviour that occurs in the, in, in the world. Um, and I've shared with you the Human Rights Commission did a yeah. survey that one in quarter of this mm-hmm. group have experience some kind of ageism in other words somebody saying to them that they have no value Mm. and I basically start the book by saying just let's knock that off because you Mm. actually have value you have experience you have wisdom you have all this life that you've lived all of this stuff you've done at work so 
as far as I'm concerned, is what they have have got and what they can do as opposed to what they haven't got and what they can't mm-hmm. do, which is the way the industry is treating this age group. So I'm sure yeah. you see the same with sometimes when you're trying to get people back into a career when they're kind of being cut down. You've got to mm-hmm. you've got to lift them up and say it's not it's not um, pink you know rose coloured glasses. It's just saying no, no. You have value but just mm-hmm. by the very fact you've got to 45 or 50 years old. You've probably experienced some stuff. <laughs> yeah. You can use that in the future. Yeah, well, what I always tell my clients is that your value is not diminished by one person's inability to see it because people look at everything through their own filters as well. And if they've got that bias or if there is ageism for whatever reason, which there isn't isn't supposed to be, but, you know, people do experience it, it it does start to eat away at the individual's self-confidence. And once their self-confidence is knocked, it makes it so hard for them to go and market themselves either into a job or even take the bull by the horns and start their own business because mm. then they start to question their ability. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that the older you are, the more experience you've gained. And if you believe in yourself and you know exactly what the skills are that you bring to the table, leverage that mm. to create your own career rather yes. than waiting for someone to pick me, you know, pick me, please. You know, yes. why don't you pick yourself and think, hey, I can run with this and I can do it. Now, yeah. self-employment's not for for everybody, though, That's because true. it depends on their, their risk appetite. Um, and so what do you advise people if they think, oh, I don't know if I want to have to deal with my own superannuation and <laughs> all that sort of thing? Yeah, so to, look, my belief is that there are organisations out there that support mm-hmm. people with experience and wisdom and, I, and mm-hmm. there's partly there's a, there's a personal responsibility and that, that personal responsibility is exactly what you said, which is to understand what you bring to the table. Um, let's call that value or currency. So a process of going through and understanding what you actually do have, not what you don't have. So let's not focus on that for the moment. But what, what do I bring to the table? Will I bring blah, 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 blah. Um, and then maybe there's a gap. Maybe there is something you might need to relearn or update your skills on, for example. You might not know about some certain way that things are done these days. Uh, so you might need to do a bit of, you know, checking as to what you need to improve to go to the next step. And then it's a case of then not just sending out resumes to people. It's about finding who is actually supporting mature age people. Exactly. So so take two really great examples. Bunnings, average age of their employees is over 50. Mm. So they're supporting mature age people. Um, Bupa Healthcare is another one. They've got, a, uh, I think it's mid-40s or might even be close to 50, average age of the workforce. They've got one lady there that's in her 70s in the call centre or something, been there for 40 years. She knows everything about Bupa. So this it's about, I think, as an individual, you then have to target your, your approach. If you want to continue to be an employee, mm-hmm. uh, then find the businesses that actually support your experience and wisdom. And there's going to be more of them because I'm going to be out there poking a few people and saying, hey, you should, you should value this experience. And that's what my, I feel my role is to do is to be a bit of an advocate for experience and wisdom. So if a few more people get that message, then hopefully there'll be more organisations that flip the switch from being we need to be young and vibrant and we don't want any oldies to we want an inclusive age agnostic workforce and then there'll be more of them over time and I'm sure there will because we've got an aging society so there'll be no one left to work if they don't employ people who are mature (laughs) (laughs) you're exactly right yeah if if you are a mature age worker and you're targeting an organization where the culture is young and funky and vibrant or whatever words they would like to describe them the fit is not there totally. and so don't market yourself into a role or an organization where you know you're not going to be the right fit because at the end of the day people are going to hire you for what you can do what you bring to the table yes. um, the way that you like to work and you know your own work preferences and will it match with the, the way that they would like you to work and yeah. the fi- finally it's the fit and yeah. most people leave an organization because of a mismatch of values or culture or fit sure. and if you find the right fit then ageism is not going to be an issue because yeah, totally. they would accept you as well yeah. so so i think it's a matter of being very sensible as a mature age worker to make the decisions as to what would be the best environment for yourself totally. and um and if it is 
running your own show, which is what, you know, the dream that so many people do have. It's like, I don't want to, I want to be my own boss. I don't want to have another boss myself. And I want to escape the corporate. If that works for you, then it's wonderful to have, you know, the steps to guide you moving forward. And, um, and I think, you know, we're, we're very much in alignment with our values and in helping individuals too. And so with generation experience and what silver and wise does that that's, an excellent offering, which which I would highly recommend that people explore. And also for myself, I have a build your business um, masterclass, which helps people to identify if they really are cut out for self-employment, leading to a build your business boot camp, which is yeah. quite exciting too. I think there's a lot of synergy there. Yeah, uh, totally, huh? totally. And yeah. there's other opportunities too. I mean, there's great companies. There's a company called Watermark Search. Now they yeah. deal with senior people who mm. who can work on contract. So mm-hmm. they'll put people into roles for three months or six months to replace somebody else who might be on maternity leave or they might be overseas or whatever. So there's other ways that you can have your own self-employment without necessarily running a business as such. Yeah. So you become a contract and you can do short-term things. So mm-hmm. it, it's probably about breaking down the fact that it's no longer about one full-time job for the rest mm-hmm. of your life. It might be that for the next 10 years, somebody who's 50, for the next mm-hmm. 10 years they work 26-month contracts. Mm-hmm. And that sees them through to a, a prosperous retirement and covers off their costs and does whatever else. But mm-hmm. there's a multitude of opportunities. That, I think the worst thing to say is there's no opportunity. I have no value, so I'm going to sit at home and, and be, uh, you know, um, emotionally sort of depressed or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's about some taking some responsibility and then it's up to you, yourself and myself and other people that are in this industry now trying to help mature age people to sort of lift them up and say, hey, they, you do have value. We're not letting you go yet. So, you know, saddle up because you've got more work to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. right. And also with the way that the world of work is changing these days, the gig economy and people taking on contract roles or temporary assignments, um, it, it's not just limited to the mature workforce. The younger totally. ones actually prefer that as well yeah. because it gives them the freedom. So I think now by leveraging technology, so many of us do have more opportunities. If only we will look to see where they are. Yeah. And, uh, if people need guidance, then they can come to you, Hunter. Yeah, <laughs> they sure, can sure. come to me. Yeah. That, that would be wonderful. Now, if yeah. people want to find you, where can yeah. they find you? Uh, well, probably the first place to look is just connect up with me on LinkedIn, and I, I write a lot of my articles on LinkedIn and, and share a lot of our news. Um, they can also visit our website, which is silverandwise.com, and that covers mm-hmm. off our programs and the services we have. Um, or they can find me on Twitter, which is uh, my handle is Blue Frog Founder. So Blue Frog Marketing is my other business, which is mm-hmm. that's why I've got Twitter handle. So Blue Frog Founder, all one word. I will have um, the links to the show notes in my on my website at janejacksoncoach.com forward slash podcast. So you'll be able to see those there if you haven't had time to, to write down uh, those URLs and, and links as well. And um, so you'll be able to find Hunter on LinkedIn easily too. So thank you so much, Hunter. Do you have any parting words you'd like to leave us with? Just recognize that you have some value and, and just pursue that because you do. Mm. Yep. So important. Thank you so much. It's been really inspiring talking to you. And I look forward to hearing how Silver and Wise goes in the future too. Cool. See you soon, Jane. Take care. Okay. Bye. For more interviews with fascinating professionals who've made amazing career changes, subscribe to Your Career Podcast on iTunes. And I'll see you next time. 